Uh, once again, uh, I'd like to say hi and hello to everyone, to all of my well wishes, uh, friends and foes alike, everyone out there, to our friends, to our foes, to well wishes, to believers, to unbelievers, to our detractors and to our supporters. Uh, it is me, as always, your best friend, your hero, Pope Emmanuel, whichever name you know me as, Peter Emmanuel. Oh, I have a secret name. I'm, I'm not going to tell you that. That's to those people uh, in, 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 on the island that knows about my activities. You know, like this guy from Mayro, one time he saw me in Roseau. And he said, boy, Mr. is the fella that does sell things for women to play with the, you know. Anyway, hello to all of you. I want to bless you. I want to tell you we are well, we are alive. I know many of you have been worried. You heard there was a severe freeze in Texas. You wondered if I had frozen to death. And some of you would have rejoiced in that occasion. But as I have told you already, just like Idi Amin, I know exactly how and when and where I'm going to die. And I will be outliving many of you. Because in order to achieve all objectives, it is necessary that some of you must depart and most of you must depart before me. And it is for that reason that I will explain to you today that I know you have missed us. You have missed us and you have missed me personally. What is life without a beautiful video, a beautiful message from me, from us, that engages you, that stimulates you, that entertains you and makes you smile. One thing I've learned in this old age is to smile and to smile more. And the worst thing is that it came at a time when we all have to be wearing masks. So I can't show my beautiful smile. I can't charm the beautiful young women. And I hope it comes to an end soon. I've been offered a vaccine. I will most likely register for it later today. But I wanted to say hi to my dear and most beloved friend of friends, the dear leader, the right honorable doctor, 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 Roosevelt Skerritt, my beloved friend, uh, Reginald Austri, uh, Dr. McIntyre, the Minister of Health, and all of my other relatives and friends down there, and including my beloved uh, Joan Commodore. And of, of course, how can I forget Levi Peter, Levi Peter, my beloved and my dear friend. And um, I want to tell you all that this year, 2021, um, I know I may, I may have spoken to you already. I don't know if you, some of you are so soft, so weak. Um, Mr. Peter, for example, I sent three official letters concerning matters before he moved before the court. And I guess you're the one who had to give the orders for them to all to be returned by me. Uh, Vince returned hers, Miss Etienne returned hers, and you returned all of yours. As if you were fear, in fear. You see, you sound like a person who when the phone rings and it says private or number unknown or name unknown, you don't answer the phone. Sir, I answer the phone regardless. I always do. And if you come to serve me, I accept service. But anyway, I survived the winter. We survived the winter. I rescued my mother. I brought her, I made a fire. I went to gather wood and I found wood and then I realized all of the equipment I needed right here, I didn't have. I had came after Hurricane Marie and brought how many generators to Dominica? And I did not keep a single generator for ourselves here in the United States of America. And this is actually where we need it most. Okay? Because at any time, at any moment, in such a high class, high standard of living society, all you have to do is take the power and you go into underclass, underclass, working class, whatever the hell you want to call it. So anyway... I rescued my mother, brought it over, started a fire. I had brought wood prior because I had anticipated in the intuition, 
when I went to Gade that I should keep firewood in case so but I wanted to get some extra firewood then I found firewood and I realized I didn't have my hatchet or my axe with me at this location and so and then I realized we had a def deficiency in our disaster preparedness plan and guess what was missing this is what was missing because I didn't have something to chop the wood with okay now this is a machete what we call a cutlass now this is the European people's version of it and I'm telling you this is way more expensive than buying it at Nassif and so if there's any of you that's traveling from Dominica, St. Lucia, Barbados, Grenada, wherever the hell you're coming from, bring your Pope five cutlasses so I can have some good, solid, old Chinese made still that I can use. Uh, because, you know, I do have bananas here. You know, I am a peasant farmer. I am not the maximum leader. Not like Manuel Noriega. Manuel Noriega said, I am the maximum leader. And get what sort George Bush did to him. George Bush took it out of niggas ass, put him in prison. He died in a French prison. As so when he finished US prison, they sent him to France. Anyway, this will help me too. But you see, this is so pretty. I don't know if I want to test it to see if water and oxidization is going to make it rust because this thing cost me $25, $25. And I bought three, one for each location and one for transportation. So as you all know, this is our tool. You know, this is the peasant tool. This is the small ax that we use to cut the big tree. And so I got this so I could cut the wood because I had scavenged some trees that people had caught. It had little bitty branches on it. And I still have it in the garage and I am going to make use of it because I went through the effort to get it. So as I would always like to say, um, uh, why would Mr. Levi Peter and the court and Miss Etienne send those letters back to me? Did you think they were a voodoo letter? Are you scared of the voodoo master? <laughs> Are you scared of the voodoo master? Because I am not a man. Look at that. You see that? It's not even that sharp. I have to get the file and sharpen it. So I can cut the banana plants and I can have it when I'm doing my gardening outside and when I have it outside in case one of these um, Hitler people come up with their dog on me I can hash it you know how y'all always threaten to hash me and throw me in the river boy chopping you a boy and putting you in the river anyway <laughs> Woo, I tell you this is a damn expensive machete and I bought three of them and hopefully uh, they will serve their purposes and in the event okay in the natural disaster you need a tool like this you understand this is not a weapon you see down where you all are when the Europeans came to Ross University and they started to see the people and especially black people walking around with machetes they made a claim of being threatened and then you all made it so people had to put their machete in a, in, in a case because the white people didn't, was not used to seeing black people walking around with machetes. But then that's what the Tutsis, no, the Hutus used to chop the leg of the Tutsis and to murder them in, in Rwanda. And, but it was a cheaper version that they had imported from China. But for us, this is a primitive means. Uh, yeah, it can serve as defense in certain circumstances, but it is not really an offensive weapon because it is very limited in the kind of destruction and in the number of enemies it can eliminate at one point or at one time. So I will put it away and to show you once again, once again, to show you and to always remind you, 
This is our weapon of choice. <laughs> this is the weapon of choice. The weapon of choice of voodoo, the weapon of choice of the avenging army of Makandal, the weapon of choice of the avenging Maki army of Makandal and the conquering army of Makandal, the weapon of choice for redemption is the pen, because the pen will always remain mightier than the sword. And don't, I mean, don't forget about our video. Look at our way. Oh, thank you for letting us into you into your life, into your home, and for speaking to you this evening. And I know you can't wait, so we'll be right back. Uh, we'll have something else for you. I know your, your attention span is short, so we don't want to speak too much and go too long, but uh, pretty soon we'll be back and, and, and we'll have another message, a lovely message, a, a message of brotherly love, a message of upliftment, a message of liberation, a message that reiterates Aluta Continua and we'll tell you about God's Electronic Army and God's Electronic Army Press and what we have planned for the offensive. We have an offensive coming up, a massive, massive offensive operation. Ah! <laughs>